Hey everyone, welcome to week 78. Today is day three. Today is Wednesday of our ongoing Finding Your Own Style week. We're using urban landscapes, so let's see how we do today. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is Wednesday. This is our third day of our ongoing Finding Your Own Style week. The emphasis maybe is not on style. What we're trying to do is understand that style really means connecting with something. And the evidence of that connection is bound to show up visually in our own paintings if that connection is understood and interiorized. So we are using throughout this week the theme of urban landscape painting to try and achieve some sense of connection. Now, why are we using urban landscape painting? Well, because I don't really feel I have that necessary connection with urban landscapes that is indispensable when you're trying to put your own spin on it. That would be an easy way to understand what imprinting your own style on something means. I think that starting from a subject matter that is not entirely unknown to us, but it's something that feels sufficiently foreign to us in the sense that I think I'm traveling through paths that I've never traveled before. And that can be horrifying, but that can also be super, super exciting. Because I think that when we start with a blank slate, we have nothing to lose. We're not fighting against ourselves. Many times we are our worst enemies simply because there's nothing to fight against. We don't have any preconceived notions. We don't have any preset conditions that we have convinced ourselves that we should follow when we are painting urban landscapes. And we don't have them because, well, this is in my case, I don't paint urban landscapes that often. So this to me is essentially a new experience. And I want to treat it as a new experience because that is the only way that I can, from the ground up, construct something that is meaningful. Understand that I'm building a relationship, I'm forging a relationship that will be strong enough so that through painting, I can manifest visually my intent. That is the definition of style. Remember, style is not a super attractive way of representing something that anyone else can copy. That's why you see in social media so many challenges, and they're even cool and interesting, where you're trying to depict a single character in the style of various artists. That's how superficial a style can deceptively be when we only want to understand style as formal qualities that show up in the execution of either a drawing or a painting. We are going to try to avoid those things like the plague because... Nothing good comes out of those things. Nothing. I mean, I understand that we can idolize other artists and how understanding them as goals can be something very plausible. Because we see that as something, you know, perhaps initially unachievable, but with a lot of practice, we realize that we can get sort of close to what they do. That can give us a boost in our confidence. That can give us a sense that we are advancing in our own path. We are getting better. But in truth, when you really think about it, when all we want to do is just get close to somebody else's manner of resolving problems, that's always going to be their manner of solving issues. That's going to belong to them. So even though the fruits that we can collect from all these efforts may seem to be sweet and may seem to be accompanied with a ton of praise because a lot of people are probably going to say, hey, that looks really cool. That reminds me of so-and-so. And we can take that compliment and puff our chest and say, yeah, that compliment was directed to me. But deep down inside, those dark moments where we have to be honest with ourselves, deep down inside, we know that those comments were not directed at us. What those people were saying was, you know what? It looks good because it reminds me of her. And to acknowledge those things, to accept those things within ourselves is very painful. It's very, very tough. And it's even tougher when we've built our career or when we've built a reputation on top of somebody else's achievements. That is something that we should try to avoid. And I know, I know that the rewards seem so attractive and they are so close. You know, they're so close that you can grab them. But we have to understand that those rewards are there because somebody else worked really, really hard. They deserve that respect. They deserve that celebration, but not us. We should feel happy for them. We should feel emboldened by their efforts. But what we have to do is feel responsible for crafting our own path. 
And maybe you don't glide through that path. Maybe you're just sludging through it. And maybe every single step you take requires an enormous amount of effort. Honestly, that's kind of cool because those are your efforts. That's the energy you are investing in your own growth. So the reason that we sort of shifted our gaze and said, we're going to try this thing. We're going to do urban landscapes. It's because I feel terribly insecure about them. I know that I can make a painting of an urban landscape. I know that. I have to believe that because I love painting and because I have such a deep connection with painting, I'm going to be capable of painting whatever subject matter you put in front of me. I don't think that's the issue. And I'm not saying this because, oh my God, I'm so good at painting. No, no, no. If you get proficient at painting, if you're decent enough at painting... You know, you could pretty much paint anything. If they put something in front of you, it's always going to be tough or it's always going to be easy. It doesn't matter. But if you have it in front of you and you're disciplined, you're going to be able to paint it. But here's the thing. Painting it is not the issue. The issue is connecting with it and trying to say something through it, even if it's something incredibly simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And that's what I've told myself during these past two couple of days. I thought I was going to be able to handle super complex things through urban landscape painting, but the reality is I can't do it. I feel like these are my first steps. I feel these are like baby steps, and it's going to take a lot more paintings for me to feel like I can say something through it, like I can manifest myself through it. Do I feel like I can do cool paintings? Yeah, sure. I have to believe that. I have to believe that at some point I am going to push as a painter And I'm going to try to make the best paintings that I know how to do. But that extra mile, that bit of effort that is required for you to really deeply connect with something and for that to be manifest so that observers can read that message with clarity. Oh, there's a journey in front of me. I'm the first one to say that this is not easy. This is never going to be easy. It's not supposed to feel easy. So I've tried to lower my defenses. I've tried to lower my ego and just say, you know, Take it one step at a time, even though I feel like I'm not making things super easy for myself. I think that a lot of the things that I'm doing would be a lot simpler if I just was disciplined enough with my underdrawing. If I had a very basic, very fundamental underdrawing where I can figure out my perspective, where I can figure out my proportions, I am pretty sure that this series of paintings would benefit from that. But because I'm an idiot and I always try to make things difficult for myself, what I've been noticing is that the natural way I feel I should combat this disconnect that I have with perspective is by being bold, by really trying to see myself as a painter. Because I do have a ton of experience as a painter and I just have to be confident enough to apply that when I'm painting urban landscapes. So yes, I'm trying to take this very slowly because I don't want to rush myself. I want to be able to acknowledge and I want to be able to recognize the good things that are happening in those paintings as well as the bad things. I mean, there's going to be a ton of very discouraging, faulty decisions, but I want to be able to see them clearly. So I'm going to be patient enough in the sense that I'm not going to try to, you know, hit a home run every time I sit down and paint. I'm very happy with these four paintings just being four singles. If I can hit it and get to first base, I'm totally fine with that. That's all I need. That's the boost of confidence that I need to keep going. So I do recognize that, but I also realize that I have this painter side in me that is pushing me to say, come on, you can be far bolder with this. You can be far more expressive. You can take far more chances. And this is like a risk-reward thing because I do want to be diligent with the decisions I make, but I also want to be bold and take chances. So it's a very nice push and pull. That's why for Mondays and Tuesdays painting, I had a sense of an underdrawing. It's never going to be a super crisp, resolved drawing underneath my painting. I have told you guys before that, honestly, when I do my underdrawings, I think I use drawing just to get a sense of what I want to do just to familiarize myself with what is going on and to just prep myself up. After I finish that little squiggle of a drawing, I want to feel like, okay, I have some sense of footing and I have acquired an idea of what this road is going to look like. 
and then I can start painting. That's why many times people ask me, oh my God, you spend time with your drawing, with your underdrawing, and then you covered it all up. You know, what was the point in that? And I guess the point is what I just explained. Through drawing, I just want to warm up to the painting. Drawing will give me courage. Drawing will give me confidence. So with paintings that I don't feel I have a sense of clarity, as is the case with these daily paintings during this week, I feel that doing an underdrawing is my safety net. For today's painting, I found a reason not to do an underdrawing because I realized I want to paint atmosphere. I mean, here I am thinking that urban landscape is all about tangents and it's all about vanishing points and all these lines have to make sense. It's a very rigid framework that I've ignorantly imposed on the way I understand urban landscapes. That's the truth. I mean, that's totally on me, 100% on me. I think I'm denying myself a ton of possibilities when I do those things, when that is my mindset, even before I lay my first brushstroke down. So for today, I was like, okay, urban landscapes doesn't mean that you have to paint, you know, facades of houses or buildings stretching towards the horizon line. Not really. I mean, if that's the painting that you want to paint, that's totally fine. But it doesn't exclusively mean those things. So I told myself, you know, you love soupy atmosphere, you know, a really thick ambient of light. So why not paint that? I think that that made this painting far more manageable. It was really cool because it didn't lessen the responsibility I had with perspective. It was almost like a heightened sense of perspective, but it only occurred in very specific instances of the painting. So what I told myself was like, okay, you can be quite bold in the way you're massing in your lights and shadows, but when the time comes to understand the drawing of that mass of light and that it has to coincide with the perspective within the image, your drawing has to be acute enough to respond faithfully to those demands. Even right now, when I hear myself saying those things, like I get super scared. I get super insecure because those decisions have to bear a lot of weight. They are going to be the decisions that carry the painting so I can totally understand why we shy away from those decisions. But I told myself, come on, if you're going to paint something you love, like this very thick sense of atmosphere, the requirement is simple in a way. You just have to be mindful in very small instances about the angles of those shapes and double check them if you have to and correct them as you paint if you have to. Just be constantly aware that the painting needs that of you. And I think that that's super cool. I mean, nothing really has changed from the beginning of the week. I'm still absolutely horrified when painting urban landscapes. I can't hide it, and I think my paintings can't really hide it either. So I'm not going to try to make paintings that desperately try to cover that fact. No, I'm totally fine with, in many ways, exposing myself, because feeling okay with that is part of painting. I have learned this with age, I guess, but... It's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, wow, that's tough. It's okay to say, you know, I gave it my best today, but things didn't really gel. They didn't work out as I thought they would. It's okay. It's not really a loss. I mean, I was going to say it's okay to take the loss, but honestly, I, I just never see it as a loss. I just always feel like these are experiences and our whole life is built upon these experiences. So they are inherently valuable. So for today, I unfortunately can't say that I wasn't struggling as much as the first two days, but I realized that I can inject the painting with a lot of the things that I love. And I can speak about those things that I love through urban landscape painting because the things that I love, you know, when I say heavy atmosphere, that doesn't mean heavy atmosphere only in interiors and only affecting figures. No, heavy atmosphere is everywhere, it's anywhere. So it obviously means that I can paint that through urban landscapes. And it was very nice. I mean, if I have to look back on these past couple of days, you know, on Monday, I realized that I could understand urban landscape as an opportunity to just do a very abstract exercise in color. It was all about contrast by complementaries, kind of. There was a big mass of yellow-orange that was my light, and it was against this kind of cutout, very transparent, very rich blue that was the sky. So I was able to view urban landscape through an abstract sense of color. On Tuesday, it was a matter of finding another type of contrast, which was temperature. And I just painted this tiny 
sort of dissipating moment of warmth surrounded by this kind of neutral coolness. And that was it. It was a very simple painting where I wanted that little bit of light to be hierarchical in my painting. And for today, like I said, it was just about atmosphere. It was about the mystery that's inherent when you hint at something. I'm realizing that I can find excuses to paint urban landscapes because those excuses become very interesting things to me that I can say through urban landscapes. I'm understanding that this week is not really about becoming incredibly proficient at doing detailed layouts of urban scenery. No, it's about how I can understand my painting through urban landscapes. That makes it far more interesting and far less threatening than the way I initially thought I had to confront this week. Today was very comforting, I feel. It was very nice, and I'm very happy with how the painting turned out. That's going to be it for today. Uh, join us tomorrow for a final day where we're going to try to, I'm going to say finish strong, but what I feel is going to happen is that I think I understand that I can paint now. <laughs> this, is, this feels ridiculous, but I think that that's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to make for a better painting. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we teach ourselves not to be afraid of these things because honestly, it doesn't make sense. And if we're going to take steps, in trying to make a connection, the first thing we have to do is to not fear them. So hopefully tomorrow, I'm just going to take advantage of the courage that I have collected through the honest investment that I have put into these past uh, three paintings. But that's going to be tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.